Well, we're in the uh, electronic shop again, and there's the TV that we did a video on recently. And uh, I've got a nice find here that um, uh, I want to show you. It's it's the uh, Zenith G500. I think it's G500. It's pretty rough. Um, missing knobs. Um, it's it's pretty rough. The chassis falling off inside. Um, it's similar in model, not the same model, but similar to that model up there. And uh, that one's in in pretty good shape, and it does play beautifully. If you'll notice there, the retractable cord, and this one doesn't have the retractable cord. This one has a dial light and phone jack on it see the dial light there and the phone jack and uh, I think that's just about it 31 meters down to broadcast and this one is 31 meters down to broadcast um, so yeah let's uh, let's see if we can get this one fired up and we'll uh, we'll get it going it does have the wave magnet which is cool and this one has a wave magnet as well but it's a little bit different and it has the charts on it and uh, the log charts oops I'm sorry I'm hanging on to the tripod it's pretty rough and there's the charts um, that came with the wave magnet built into the end into the uh, radio and this earlier model just had this removable wave magnet here um, so um, let me show you what condition the radio is in and uh, we'll look at the exterior first. Okay, I'm going to lay it down. On its, well, I want you to see the, the base. So it's been sitting in water and it's in pretty rough condition. The, the back um, is just held on by the tattered cloth. And I'm going to pull this loose because I'm going to do some repair here. And I just want, there we go. I just want to get that fixed. The um, antennas were supposed to snap in here. I don't remember what this was. I just don't remember what this clip was for. Maybe you can tell me if you remember. But this is the um, Xena Transoceanic. And um, it has a uh, external clip here for the antenna that was supposed to be wired in here. And um, there was a cover or something here. There's so much about this set that I don't remember. I've repaired several of these. And this one is intact, but it's got, let me unplug this wave magnet. Remember I said the wave magnet was removable. And it is, you can pull that cord loose and come out the top of the radio. But I'm going to pull the chassis out. I can. There we go. We'll just pull it completely out. And we're going to try to get it running. Oh, there's one of the suction cups. I think there's another suction cup somewhere in the car that holds the wave magnet on. And of course that wave magnet, I'm not talking about the one on the front. There's the push buttons. They're all there. That's great. So they all mount or all slide into the front there. And that's the push button channel right here. The uh, dial string is broken so we don't have any dial I can turn it here so we'll we'll work on the dial string no problem all the tubes are in there let's see if I can show you all the tubes are there there's two one two three four five so it uses the five tubes there's the battery connector and then uh, let's see a phone jack, special phones that plugged into that, and in order to enable the battery pack to work, 
there was a switch that you it was right here and you would plug the AC cord in right there and you would flip a switch underneath the chassis to enable the battery pack so it wouldn't blow up the batteries when you plugged it in or whatever somebody's been working on it because they installed this uh, this non-zenith cap here and I think it, everything else looks almost original there's some black burned up stuff going on here this cap was replaced because it melted and destroyed the let me see if I can come up close to you. If you'll look at the blackened stuff underneath that cap, or excuse me, underneath that resistor, you can see, and the cords, see those black cords right in there? They're all melted. So this resistor was replaced. It overheated and burned up and caught on fire. Actually, yeah, it caught on fire because there's smoke damage to the chassis right in, right in there. Know if you can see that that lighting isn't just super great in here but let's uh, let's test this cap 50 microfarad we can use the ESR tester on it and we'll check that cap to see if it's any good and uh, I don't know I'm just trying to give you a kind of a look of things here lots of bumblebee caps with those colorful cap capacitors are called bumblebees or black beauties and uh, speakers in beautiful condition and the dial the glass plate is in great shape or plastic whatever that is um, I don't remember I don't think there are any lights on this set any dial lights on this set so that was an improvement that they made on the set that we just looked at up here on the shelf was they added a dial light so that you could watch or listen to your radio and watch what you were dialing at night um, when the signals are so strong so it's a 455 kilohertz um, intermediate frequency radio multi-band one two three four five six seven band so let's see if we can get any sound out of this. The speaker does have a couple cracks in it, um, but but the frame and everything is good. I said it was in excellent shape. I guess there is some little bit of damage there, but we're going to just try to uh, we'll set the, the case aside and we'll just set this down on the bench and see if we can get it to fire up. Uh, no pun intended. I'm going to turn the camp wizard on and uh, this thing hasn't been powered up in 50 years. Okay, that cap is actually good. That cap test is good and that's the uh, main filter cap. So we're going to just plug it in. I'm just going to plug it in and uh, Let's see if we can get yeah there's a rectifier diode right in there you see it right there and uh, DC rectifier and we've got this candom resistor which I hope is okay somebody had soldered all this together um, put in a power strip here soldered it on to that to that resistor and so I'm not sure what all work has been done to this, honestly, but we're going to uh, we're gonna we're gonna hope that it fires up, and we have a little bit of hum for something. So let's see here. Unplug this 12 volt supply, and I'm gonna set this where you can see. Plug it into a, an isolated output so that we've got protection. Okay, I just tested the power on the 
external the uh, filtered supply here. We're going to plug it in. Just plug it right in. It's turned on. Um, check. See, do, well, these one volt tubes aren't going to aren't going to do much for sure. Um, let's see if we have any amperage draw. No, no amperage draw. So let's follow the money. Let's see, here's our meter. Okay, so we got. Okay, we got 123 volts there, and let's see if we got anything across the uh, diode. If the diode's burned out, 111 volts, 123 volts. To the chassis, 18 volts AC to the filter, I mean to the uh, rectifier, 3 volts through the 5 watt, and it's hot as a blister, it's warming up, I thought hot as a blister, but it's warming up. Okay. Um, so this feeds the string. So let's see if we got DC power here now. 112 volts DC minus 64 volts. Well, 64 volts, 65 volts, and AC 122 volts DC. 113 volts. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to the broadcast band. Okay, that's power. Okay, that's good. So let's turn it off and flip it over. Um, I don't like using carpet on the, these tests, and I wouldn't recommend it. I have a fire extinguisher here, but I need a fireproof. I do have a fireproof cover uh, for this, but uh, now that we've tested the power, okay, that's the cap that they replaced. This. No, we didn't have an antenna plugged in. That didn't help us any. But we still should have had some noise on the uh, on the uh, speaker, and we didn't. Let's turn it back on. Let's see if we have any filament. I don't think these filaments are going to light up. Um, they might. And we one and a half volt filaments. Turn it on. Okay, it's turned on. Yeah, I'm not getting any bump at all on the base on the uh, ammeter. So there's no draw. So we may have filaments. Filaments might be all open, and that might be why we don't have any any uh, current draw. Wouldn't surprise me if that was the issue. So let's do a real quick check while we're here. Let's just do a real quick check on the, the tubes and uh, see if we've got, um, because we have AC, we know that, and that, fill, that, that resistor is warm, which implies that there's a draw somewhere. This cap, 
yeah, was used to replace the bad cap that was bad down here. Okay. And um, we could, let's do, before we do the tube check, let's check the other caps. Uh, that is a one, two, three, four element filter, a four element filter. And uh, so let's, uh, let's just check those other elements. I'm trying to find something that will hold this up. All right, we'll short those elements out so that we don't power them up. Uh, I don't test them powered. Okay, the cord is unplugged. And we'll short them to ground. Okay, no spark. No sparky, no malarkey. Okay, there's the ground. Let me make sure chassis may not be ground uh, there we go okay. shorted 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 all right now we can check the cat so we'll go to its ground that's the one I just tested that's two ohms, two ohms, three ohms. That's eh, not perfect, but I don't think it's enough to consider it bad. Um, the diode. Oh. Oh, let's check that diode. Yeah, diode's fine. Okay, so let's go back to our plan to check. These, um, with a spike or a, a surge or something, can pop out the tubes pretty easily. And this is a 1U4. 1U4. So we'll go up to the tube tester and let me get rid of that glare for you there we go and let's put that tube tester into motion that's a television audio tube 1U4 and then we will plug the tube in give it a chance to warm up and then we'll run it test. Let's see if I can get the, there we go. That ought to be good enough. That tube is open. Yep, that tube is open. Yeah, it's not, it's not moving. Okay, so that tube is open. Let's check out. I've, I've repaired some of these sets where all the tubes were burned out. And uh, no idea what happened. Either something burned up and surged them all and burned all the filaments out. But uh, it wouldn't be the first time that we run into that. Okay, that tube is testing good. Right, and we can check for shorts by pushing up G. Okay, no shorts there. And uh, let's switch to uh, the second element, BEF, lower G, test. Eh, questionable. BEF. Yeah, this tube is this tube is questionable. Um, it may be okay, 
and then uh, to test for G, test for shorts. Yeah, so that element's not shorted, but that tube is questionable. And that's the 1L6. We're going to plug it back in because we got one half the element. That's the, uh, I think that's the oscillator, but I'm not sure. Uh, some of these guys that do these repairs every day for a living, literally for a living, um, have all these tubes memorized and know them by heart. I know Shango does. Very impressive. Okay, this tube has no number on it. 1U5. Okay, alright. And that was a 1U5. Yeah, 1U5. 1U5. So we need to find a, and these tubes, as you know, if you've watched Shango, he did a solid state replacement of these tubes, 1U4. Uh, I have, I, I'm trying to remember if I have another one like it. I've got one in the museum. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. I, I, th I think it's an earlier model than this one. So it may be one in the set of t of radios, which means I want to fix it. Yeah, filament's open on it. Okay. All right. So we need to find a one U four. So let's do that. Let's go look at their stash Back again with a good one U four. So this one's bad. Set it aside. And uh, all right. So now we should have some current draw on the power supply and uh, move some of this stuff so we can actually see what's going on here and uh, we'll plug it in turn it on okay, okay we got us got some noise Let's, uh, let's hook up an antenna. Let's get the uh, antenna from the other set. Okay, this is that antenna that we pulled out with those two thumb screws. And here's that wire we were looking at earlier that allows us to hook the antenna up. There we go. I'll just set it over here somewhere. And we should be able to just hook it up to terminals here. There's no noise, so I'm not sure that this antenna is making connection. Spray it with deoxit. Okay, there's the end. There it is. Let's put those ends. Get the cockroach off of there. I don't know whether this antenna is any good, but with this cord on, it ought to help us a little bit. Okay. All right, we're going to unplug it, and we're going to spray the tube sockets. Okay, getting some sound.
all this needs to be sprayed and cleaned. Yeah. Remember, this is the Faraday cage house. To write, the address is box 766. 805-35-USA. Our fax number is country code 01-307-745-5914. Again, Okay, that's the broadcast channel, and it should be, that was it. abominations and absurdities that marked her reign during the century in darkness. They excuse her horrible cruelty as a reason. Okay, the set is very quiet. Not a lot of background noise, which concerns me. Should have a lot of background noise. This switch is so dirty. You just barely Yeah, so our broadcast band is definitely not working, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if we've got really badly corroded switches here. Let's just spray all of that. Kill the power. Let's spray all fire out of that. This step is a miracle, miracle chemical. Um, I can't get to the front of those, so I'll spray it down through here and maybe that'll get some of it. 
stuff's expensive, the oxid. But but it really works. It does. I'm I'm really really. I use it for everything. All the tape recorders that I've repaired over the years, and volume controls, and switches. And okay, let's spray a little bit on the volume control, even though it wasn't too terribly scratchy. Okay, that's good. Alright, let's try it again. Yeah, the amperage is, is pulling such low amperage that um, Yes, we got something open there for sure. All right, so we got to figure out why we don't have any broadcast. Our shortwave bands are working. I mean, it, it's middle of the day, well, it's six o'clock in the summer, and so some of these bands aren't going to pull anything in with an indoor antenna anyway. Um, and that's what we should be getting on all of the bands, honestly. So the quiet bands are probably the switch. And it could be alignment. There's alignment on every one of the bands. Is an evidence of inward corruption. 31 meters. The religion of Christ needs not such attractions to recommend it. In the light shining from the cross, true Christianity appears so pure and lovely that no external decorations can enhance its true worth. The tone controls, that was a switch, that was a, the switched tone selections was a Zenith feature, and it does work. Mid-range, bass, auto, voice, and treble. So that's auto. The pomp and ceremony of the Catholic worship has a seductive, bewitching power by which many are deceived. And they come to look upon the Roman church as the very gate of heaven. None but those who have planted their feet firmly upon the foundation of truth, and whose hearts are renewed by the Spirit, are proof. The significance is that more men die than... Oh, 31 meters blow, booming in here, isn't it? That's what broadcast should be. And see, broadcast is dead. So I'm not sure what is causing the broadcast to die. Um, could be that it's missing the antenna, because the broadcast antenna uses a different antenna. So let me see if I can find that antenna here. Yeah, yeah, it's a wire antenna. Let me show you. So there it is. That's the broadcast antenna, I'll bet you. And it's probably a wire in here. So let's let's just hook up the the. Yeah, I can already hear crackling. Um, yeah. Yeah. There we go. And we're not going to get an AM station in here. 
I could turn my AM transmitter on and probably pull in a station. Yeah, there's 600, and you can see all I've got is a carrier, and that's the problem with testing AM radios in the shack here. Let's get some dial string and we'll redial or we'll restring this. But it's tuning beautifully for an indoor antenna. Five is not all that easy to get without the right antenna. Talking about correlated universal time, WWV out of Colorado, and uh, 5, 10, 15.